what's the team used for, for the big game against Wolves then? Any players returning, any fresh injuries? No, so Ricky's still out with a hamstring injury. Um, he's still a couple of weeks away. Um, Yannick played in a 21s game on Monday uh, and injured his calf, so he's going to be out for the season now. Unfortunately, uh, him and Ryan wanted to get back to fitness to put themselves into contention. Um, unfortunately, Yannick didn't get through it. Ryan's come through it, um, you know, so he's got 65 minutes now under his belt. Um, and Harvey Barnes, Harvey's ready to go on the grass. He's been on the grass. He's not actually trained with us yet. I think it'd be a risk to put him in on Saturday because we could lose him then for the six games and I've got to balance that risk. So I know that he'll start training on Sunday and, and be ready for, for Tuesday then. Was that, was that an easy decision to think, look, sacrifice this game with him? With obviously the bigger picture in mind. Yeah, no, it's not an easy decision. He's our top goal scorer this season, so you know, big player for us. Um, but I've just got to balance the risk, and I just felt the risk would be too much. He wouldn't have been able to start this weekend. That would have been too quick for him. But he may have got minutes off the bench. Um, but the risk for him to re-injure would, was just too big for me. So um, Tuesday's more realistic goal for him. Now that you've got Manchester City out of the way, what have you said to the players about? these next three fixtures in, in particular, Wolves, Leeds and Everton? Uh, not an awful lot, really. I've only just spoke about the Wolves game. Um, we're just taking it one game at a time. We knew the Manchester City away game was going to be quite a unique game because of the way they play, uh, the form they're in, um, the level they're at compared to pretty much everyone else in, in the Premier League apart from Arsenal at the moment. So, um, you know, it didn't help being two goals down so early. Um, but I thought we defended our box in general OK and finished the game really well. So we can take positives out of that going into the game. But everybody knows you know, uh, how important this fixture is uh, on Saturday at home uh, under new management for ourselves. And hopefully we get to see a lift from the players and you know, hopefully we can start how we finish the game at Manchester City. What have you seen in your early days here that gives you the belief that this squad can stay up? I think I said last week what I saw on the training ground was, you know, a lift, um, you know, some confidence in some players, um, you know, that had probably been missing over the last few weeks. Um, but, but from the match, the, the biggest thing that gives me belief, I, I saw players who cared. Um, you know, we went two goals down after 10 minutes, 3-0 down after 24 minutes. Um, but players were worried about... They had a pride in their own performance. They had a, a pride in the team's performance and a pride in playing for Leicester City. So um, the fact that they cared for me shows me there's an awful lot of character in the team. And when you've got character and, and a spirit with the talent that we've got, then you know that should be enough to, to win football games. As a manager, how much importance do you place on expected goals? We hear that term a lot nowadays in football. And the reason I ask that is because I think Leicester had a higher XG than... Manchester City in that second half and I think that's the first time it's happened at the Etihad this season for an opposition team to have that. Do you place much importance on that? Do you look at that? I worked at Brentford for three years so I have to place yeah. some importance on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, the state of the game was different, obviously. Uh, Manchester City made changes when we got um, our expected goals up. Um, you know, for them to only have 1.6, I think it was, uh, I think that's you know, strong for us really defensively. You know, although we were three goals down, you know, point eight is a got is is a penalty. Um, so they didn't create massive chances against us, and that's a positive, and that's why we defended our box really well. The fact that we wanted to stay in the game and finish well, um, it happened that we we didn't stay in the game, but we did finish really well, um, and that's a real positive to take because. You know, despite all the changes that, that Manchester City made and, you know, we made at half-time as well, still hard to, you know, to, to create them chances against City like we did. And just a final one, uh, Soyuncu back uh, for you. What did you see that made you bring him back and, and how important a player can he be in the running? I've always liked, liked him from afar. Um, so whenever ever I've come up against him or, or watched Leicester play, always enjoyed watching him. He's an aggressive centre-back. Very, very good on the ball, strong, quick, everything that you'd like to see. Um, and he showed them qualities in you know, the first two or three days training. Obviously, my worry was you know, the lack of game time he'd had. Um, but he'd also played two games in the international period for Turkey. So you know, we knew he could go and play games. 
Um, and when I spoke to him, the fire was there. And that's what I want to see, the fire that he wants to play and he wants to care for the club. And, um, you know, I thought that was great to see and that's why I put him in. Thanks, Dean. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. Hi, Dean. Good Hi. afternoon. What did you sense from the players before and after the Man City game, especially in terms of their confidence levels leading to this weekend now? So before the game, I, I thought there was a, an excitement about it, to be honest. Um, you know, a feeling that we could go and do something that very few teams go and do. Um, you know, obviously then flames got very quickly dampened, uh, you know, with the goals that we conceded. Um, you know, so half-time was a difficult place. You know, players were feeling a bit low with being three goals down. Um, you know, I didn't feel it was a performance that deserved to be three goals down. Yes, Manchester City had lots of control. They have lots of control against most teams. Um, but the big, big thing was they hadn't created big chances against us, and that was a plus. We had to, you know, change a few things. We wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, um, you know, when they were playing between the lines. And I thought we did that and won the ball back a number of occasions. Uh, so the feeling after was, you know, a little bit of what if, if we'd, you know, stayed in the game a little bit more. And, you know, if Madders had taken this chance to make it 3 2 with, you know, seven or eight minutes to go, could have been a different game. But, yeah, we've learned our lessons from that. The players have learned about me and my coaching staff what, what we want. And we've learned an awful lot about the players because we managed to get five subs on the pitch as well and, you know, looked at 16 players in, in, in total. We saw the new manager impact at Wolves earlier this season. How do you think your players reacted to the change of management they experienced in such a critical timing of the season? I think only time will tell. That will be for other people to judge rather than me. Um, I can only talk about what I see on the training ground and the players have worked extremely hard so far and you know, with a great intensity and, uh, and um, attitude as well. Saturday will be your first home game as a Leicester manager. What do you expect from the fans and their support for this survival challenge? Well, it's really important for us that we're, we're together in this. We all want the same, same goal, which is, which is to win football games and stay in the Premier League. And we can only do that together. Um, what the fans will want to see is players who are working extremely hard for each other, um, proud to wear you know, the shirt. And, you know, we need to give them something to shout about and hopefully we can go and do that. And, you know, uh, I think the last game before COVID, I went there with Villa and we lost 4-0. I think um, Pepe Reina ran out, missed the ball and they went 1-0 up. But from that moment, the fans got behind the, the team and it was, a, it was a real tough day then to get back. And we need the fans behind us at the King Power now. What is the biggest threat you expect from Wolves Saturday? I think they've got a threat all over the pitch. Um, you know, Costa's been a real talisman for them in terms of, you know, building off him, uh, running the channels, um, you know, everything you come to expect from him. Uh, but they're on a good run of form as well. They've just beat Chelsea 1-0, Brentford 2-0. Um, so they'll certainly be confident. And when you look at the relegation battle in general, why do you think we are seeing so many teams involved this season? It's been quite a unique system to be on, uh, season, to be honest. Um, you know, so many teams being involved in it. You know, at one stage it was Crystal Palace all the way down, you know, bottom nine teams. You know, Crystal Palace have just had a great return of results under, under Roy. Um, you know, and that's what we're hoping for now. Cheers. Hi, Dean. Hi, Hi Charlie. Hi, um, They always say you only get one chance at a, a first impression. With that in mind, ahead of Saturday, how much emphasis do you put on that opportunity to make that first impression in front of the majority of the fans for the first time? Yeah, I don't think there will, will have been too many Leicester fans who didn't watch the Manchester City game. So, um, you know, that was a first impression. Hopefully, the lasting impression is that these, these lads will keep fighting for us, uh, as they did last week. Um, but we really need to be concentrated on us, and we have this week. We know the strengths that Wolves will have, um, but we've got to be concentrated on ourselves and you know, get, the, get the fans behind us. And the only way you can go and do that is by being front foot, aggressive, um, and that's what we're looking to do. When you're saying that the, the chances of survival in this little mini-season that you've got yourself into here at the tail end of it wouldn't be decided... Um, based off of what you do at Manchester City, but um, the next four, but certainly the next three, is it fair to say that they could go a long way to deciding your, your fate? Yeah, they could. I mean, 
as I said, Manchester City is not, you're not going to be defined on that. I don't think any team is going to Manchester City. And, uh, but the games that are coming up now, we can only look at Wolves to start with, but it's a big game because our results at home haven't been where, where they should be. So we need to go and get a result and a performance. And, uh, you know, because that will just give, lift the belief of the, the, the City and the, and the fans as well. Just finally, following them all season long, and think of the difference that one win made to the confidence of the group uh, before the World Cup break, way back when, and how they then managed to string a, a few victories together. Um, is, is confidence the, the biggest key still at the moment? What, what could one win do for this group? It could really lift them. I mean, you know, we look at the quality that we have you know, on the training ground, and um, we really like the qualities that they've got. We haven't brought that out onto the pitch for whatever reason. Uh, you know, over the last eight or nine games, you know, our job is to get that out onto the pitch. Uh, I said before the last home game, uh, what I saw against Bournemouth was a, a lethargy. We can't have that on Saturday. Uh, you know, we need to be free. We need to be able to play with confidence. And you know, from what we've seen so far, I think they can do that. Thanks, Dean. Wish you well on Saturday. Thank you. Hi, Dean. Hi, mate. Okay. Um, I wonder if I could ask about Yuri Tillemans and how he came through uh, the, the game against Manchester City. It was his first start for, for quite a while. So how, how did he come through that and how is he kind of doing this week? Yeah, no, he got through it really well. Um, and he's trained well this week as well. Um, you know, part of my reasoning to put him in last week was, you know, it was going to be a low block game um, against City. He's not going to be making 40 or 50 yard run, runs uh, in that game, such is the state of games that Man City play. But I also knew he would be in a better place for the games to come by getting 60 minutes. Um, and that's what he did. So we're really pleased that he got the 60 minutes last week. Um, you know, and he's in, he's in a better place now for, for this weekend. On Charles and I know you've mentioned already that uh, you've seen the kind of fire in his eyes. Uh, do you see him as, as part of a back five, like you played against Manchester City, or do you see him as a player who can come in and play in a, a, a back four as well? Just I'm, I just wonder tactically how you view what he can offer. Well, I think we all saw that on Saturday he can play in a five, um, but he can play in a four as well and has done so uh, quite accomplished as well to play in there. Uh, what have you made to Wolverhampton Wanderers in, in your preparation for this game and, and tactically how you have to assess them and, and work them out? Yeah, we've got to decide, well, we've got to work out first and foremost whether, you know, they bring Never straight back in. Um, they've won two games without him. Um, he's probably been a permanent fixture in the team since he's been there. Um, you know, but they've got quality players all over the pitch and um, we have to make sure that we nullify the threats that they have and take our game to them. Um, they're very well organised. Uh, they, they like to create overloads on the outside and, and get crosses into the box. Um, you know, so we're, we're fully aware of them and we fully respect the, you know, the, the football club and the team they are. Um, but we can't play any, with, with any fear this weekend and we won't. Uh, final one, Dean. Is it fair to say that we'll, we'll see a bit more of a, an orthodox Dean Smith side this weekend rather than the kind of game plan we saw at Manchester City and that fans will get to see more of what and how you want this Leicester side to play in the remaining few games? You won't see us sitting in a in a low block for you know the majority of the game, um, but unfortunately, I think that we felt that was the best plan to to go to City, and you know uh, I don't think I'm the only coach in thinking that way as well when you go and play them. So, no, hopefully you see more of a, a side that's uh, you know uh, demanding of possession, but also you know uh, providing threats at the top of the pitch as well. Dean, thank you very much.